What's up everybody, Delspreet Singh here, and if you haven't seen it, the former chief economist at the SEC, his name is Larry Harris, he came up publicly and he said, quote, it's going to be very hard to stop inflation without a recession. And the reason why, he said, is because, quote, raising interest rates will choke off spending by increasing the cost of financing. And then he went on in that same interview to say that, quote, there will be a day of reckoning. The question is how soon? So the things that I want to go over now, if you haven't seen this interview, I'll also link it for you down in the description. But the things that I want to go over in this interview are fourfold. I wrote notes, so that's where I'm looking here. I want to talk about what's going on with inflation, really what's really going on with inflation, even the things that the Fed might not publicly state. Then I want to go over what's going on in the global world, because this is something you definitely want to pay more and more attention to with all the issues going on over there. Third, I want to talk about the markets, because there's been a lot of uncertainty there and a lot of ups and downs. And fourth, I want to talk about things that you should do, because uh, in that same article, the former SEC chief economist talked about three things that he recommends you should be doing. So make sure you watch this video until the end. That way you know what you should be doing with your money. So let me start by talking about number one, what's going on with inflation. So inflation uh, has really not slowed down. Uh, I mean, if you look around you, the prices of things are significantly higher today than where they were a year ago. Just go to the grocery store go pump your gas, go try to book a vacation. The flight tickets are, are so expensive. So when inflation is pretty much across the board, everybody is feeling the price of it. Everything is more expensive now than it was before. And it's really starting to catch up with some of the retailers. And the easiest way to look at that is just look at kind of the trends. Amazon, Target, and Walmart have been struggling. If you look at their most recent earnings reports, all three of them said that inflation is really hurting their businesses. People are spending much more money on low margin items like food and in the terms of like fruits and vegetables and people are spending less money on the higher ticket, higher price, higher margin items, the more the discretionary items. What do they tell us? Well, people have uh, a higher cost to buy the things that you really need and they have less money to buy other stuff. So these things have hurt uh, their future outcomes for these companies or their future projections. While at the same time, dollar stores uh, dollar, the whatever dollar company, I forgot what they're called, the dollar generals or whatever of the world, their recent earnings reports are showing bigger profits or bigger sales in the future. So if more and more people are going to dollar stores, what does that tell us? People are starting to feel more of a pinch of the economy. They're feeling more of a pinch of the inflation because they're not able to buy as much stuff as they could before. Uh, you know, do these dollar stores really thrive more in economic downturns because people have less money to buy other things. They literally look for discounts, so they're not spending as much money as Target. They're spending more money at the dollar store. And we're already starting to see that happen. So that's the first point of inflation. But I also want to talk about gas prices because gas prices have been really increasing pretty drastically. A friend of mine texted me uh, who's involved kind of in the financial space but not too much and he texted me after a long time and he goes just but i know you make these youtube videos but i just paid seven dollars a gallon for gas here in chicago what's going on so when regular people start to really start to feel the effects of inflation that's how you know that it's affecting people because now people see it and now they start wondering someone who's never really cared about finances before is feeling the effect and now they start questioning why is gas so expensive and the average gas right now in the United States is, I'm reading this, $4.59 a gallon. That's about 51% higher than where we were a year ago. A year ago, we were right around the $3 a gallon point. And JP Morgan, the biggest bank out there, came out and said that they expect gas prices to go to near $6 a gallon potentially this summer. They said if things don't change, that we can expect $6 a gallon median. So if you're in California, expect more than that because I'm in San Diego right now and I'm already paying $6 a gallon, but uh, median across the country is $6 uh, is what they're saying unless something completely changes. So the inflation problem is there and the Fed says that they're working to fight it now uh, with raising interest rates. I have a bunch of videos talking about that. I'm not gonna go too deep into that right now, but you can watch those videos. So inflation is there and it doesn't look like it's 
slowing down anytime soon because gas prices, higher oil prices affect the cost of everything. It makes transportation costs more expensive, which means your groceries become more expensive, which makes your vacations more expensive. So oil costs, just know that they trickle down to pretty much every part of the economy. The second thing I want to talk about has to do with your global economy because this is where things start to get really interesting if you really study what's going on on the economic side of things. So the United States, along with pretty much every other country in the world, created a lot of inflation in 2020 and 2021 as a response to the pandemic. Countries were printing money around the world, including the United States, and now many countries are paying the price. We here in the United States are paying the price because of the inflation, but we are fortunate in the United States that we have the world's reserve currency, that we have the world's strongest superpower, we are the world's you know, strongest military presence, but other countries don't always have that benefit. So some of the smaller, poorer countries, more developing countries, they're feeling a much bigger pinch from the inflation and the economic slowdowns. And that is not so good, not even for people in the United States, because one, we export and import a lot of products. So if countries around the world are buying stuff from us, well, and they have less money, they're gonna be able to buy less stuff. And second, we buy a lot of stuff from other countries. And if they are struggling, they're going into recessions, it's harder for them to produce things for us. And third, the United States also provides aid for a lot of countries. And so if you start to see a lot of countries around the world starting to struggle, well, there's a uh, high chance that the United States will get involved, whether it's militarily or financially. Both of those things have a cost, financially and other costs as well, cost of human life. But uh, just with and the emotional cost. But if you look at just the financial cost for a second, uh, Sri Lanka just defaulted on their debts, the country, the government. What does that mean? The government borrowed way more money than they were earning from taxes and they couldn't keep making all their payments. So they defaulted and it created uh, a huge crisis over there because now uh, the, the currency is in shambles. People are, are in uproar there's a lot of unrest over there it's causing major inflation so the world bank has said that about a dozen other developing countries could default on their debts so it'll be interesting not only to see what happens but also to see what the response is going to be of the united states government because if we the united states gets more involved that's a higher cost here for the united states and we already have a uh, more than 30 trillion dollar national deficit we're already spending way more money than we bring in so that would create more inflation here. Uh, and then the second side that you wanna pay attention to, not only of the default, but is also the food costs because everything that's going on in Russia and Ukraine, that area is the breadbasket of the world. That's what it's called. They produce uh, the most wheat and other grains. And so many countries, developing countries, rely on that part of the world to get their food. Well, <laughs> they're not gonna be able to get it. Right in the near future, because of everything going on in the war, not only are the farmers not able to produce it because there isn't that labor, some farmers have left or they've joined the fight, but then the countries, Ukraine especially, has said that they don't have the ability to export because they need the food to feed their own citizens. So you have dozens of countries, I think it was around 70 that uh, the World Bank reported that could be facing food shortages or even potential famine. So again, what does that mean? Obviously, it's very bad for the people over there. It's very sad to see that. But there's also, you know, costs associated with that because now if the United States gets involved over there, again, more inflation. These are all things that can cause more inflation and things you want to pay attention to, not only from a human perspective, because obviously, you know, not, nobody wants to see these type of things happen, but all these things affect our economics and our finances and our money and and you know these are things you want to pay attention to especially if you're an investor in this turbulent time you want to know what's happening that way you can stay on top of this and i know a lot of people are not really talking about hap what's happening on the global side of things and i don't i don't talk about it too much on this channel but just something you want to be aware of we do talk about it in market briefs we have a sector sorry a section in market briefs uh, my financial newsletter uh, that goes over what's going on in the global world it's called global scoop uh, market Brief is completely free, by the way. Um, if you haven't joined it, it's a free financial newsletter that breaks down uh, the top finance and business news into a fun, witty, and easy-to-read email. 
So if you haven't joined Market Briefs, it's completely free. We talk about inflation, the stock market, the real estate market, uh, global scoop, and kind of whatever else is happening in the market. So if you are an investor, Market Briefs is completely free and you can join by clicking the link down in the description below. And that brings me to number three, which is the markets. So the easy way to determine where the markets are gonna go is to pay attention to the Fed. Because the Fed can either fight inflation or they can fight a slowing economy. The way they fight inflation is by raising interest rates and that causes a slowdown in the economy. So if the Fed is fighting inflation, that would generally cause asset prices to go down because then borrowing costs go up. But if the Fed is fighting a recession, a slowing economy, that means they're stimulating, they're creating inflation, and that generally causes asset prices to go up. Now, right now, the Fed is fighting inflation, but that doesn't guarantee that they will continue that fight even if inflation is high, because if the Fed gets worried about the economy, they could change course. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, you know, just look at what's happening around the world, kind of going back to the global aspect. China, just uh, I think it was last week, cut their interest rates. China's economy is struggling. They're also facing these inflationary issues, but their economy has been slowing down. They haven't been able to grow at the same rate that they would like to see. So their central bank just cut their interest rates again. And so, uh, you know, this is something that you want to pay attention to, to the Fed, from the Fed, because the Fed right now has said that their issue that they're going to focus on is inflation. They just said that in their last meeting, as well, that they're focusing on inflation. They wanna fight inflation, they wanna fight inflation, and they're not worried about the economy. They said uh, in the most recent meeting, I'm gonna be covering this in a video coming out soon, but they said that they're not worried about the recession, they're not worried about the economy slowing down. They actually said that the first quarter GDP slowed down, it wasn't a real slowdown. Uh, so they said that our economy is still very strong, they're not worried about that, they're gonna to continue to fight inflation. But if their metrics change, well, they could change course, they could focus on now fighting this recession and that would make inflation significantly worse. That could really change the course of asset prices. It, would, it could cause a crash in asset prices, not down, but up because they're creating so much more inflation where people would just wanna get out of cash and buy assets, which could cause more inflation, more bubbles in the asset market. And you know, anytime you see that happen, it creates a bigger wealth gap between the rich and the poor. Asset prices skyrocket, now regular people feel poorer because they don't own assets. So that's something you want to pay attention to with the markets. You have to pay attention to what the Fed is doing. We do cover that in market briefs in case you were wondering. And that brings me to four. What do you do? So going back to the article uh, that the SEC former chief economist said, he said there's three things that you should focus on doing right now. And the first thing he says is to streamline your spending. So I know this is a hard thing, thing to do, especially when you have all this super high inflation when the cost of everything is just going higher and higher and higher. But this is where what he says is you have to be very careful of your spending right now. You really need to monitor your spending and cut back on some of the things that you don't need. That way you have cash to invest, you have cash to protect you. The second thing he says is avoid variable interest rate debt. Avoid this at all costs because right now the Fed is doing a interest rate hiking cycle. So if you have any sort of variable interest rate debt, whether that means credit card debt or a home equity line of credit, uh, these things, your payments are going to change depending on interest rates. And for the near term future, the Fed is going to be working to raise interest rates. So if you have any sort of variable interest rate debt, if you have this type of credit card debt, if you have a home equity line of credit, work to pay that off as soon as possible because your payments are going to get more expensive, even if your debt isn't growing because, well, interest rates are going up. So something you want to be aware of. And third, he says that if you have some extra cash, consider investing your money into I-bonds. These are bonds issued by the government that are made to help, or I guess they're, they're tracked kind of to inflation, where the interest rate that you get goes up when inflation goes up. And right now, until October, I'll give you the actual rate, they're paying about 9.62% a year. Now there is a limit to how many I-bonds that you can buy. Each person can buy up to $10,000 worth of I-bonds in one year. And also understand that if you sell your I-bond in less than five years after buying it, that you do have to pay a kind of like a fee or penalty. You, you have to pay back some of the interest that you get, but the I-bond will pay you dollars based off of inflation. If inflation goes higher, the I bond rate goes higher, inflation goes lower, the I bond rate goes lower. Uh, 
And if you're wondering, what is the risk? What's the catch? Well, it is a bond that you give to the government. So it's backed by the federal government. So the risk, uh, obviously, it's it's less risky in that sense, traditionally, because you know, you're backed by the government. But the risk would be if the government were to default or if something were to happen to our currency, then that's where the value of your investment would really be hit hard. So uh, if you want to buy an I-bond, those are things that you can buy directly from the government. Uh, TreasuryDirect.gov, I think that's what it is. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, so that's what he says is the third thing they should be doing. But in any case, this is why financial education is so important to pay attention to what's happening. That way, not only you're aware, but you can make smarter decisions with your money so you can take care of yourself, so you can take care of your family, and so you can take care of your community. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see how you can take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to build wealth, I made a video covering that, and you can watch it by clicking this button right over there. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep hustling. So regardless of whether or not we're going to see a recession in 2022 or 2023 or 2024, the reality is we have been kicking this inflation can down the road for a long time and we've been really putting off a lot of issues 